The topic for this morning's class invites meditation and the topic is the meaning and the glories of the holy name. So with this Jaya Radha Madhava song that we inherited from Bhaktivinoda Thakur gifted to us by our founder Acharya. As we sing the song, please meditate on the meaning. It's just, this is the theme of this morning's class. Could somebody open those windows? We get some nice fresh air in here. Uh, according to Haridas Thakur in Harinam Chintamani, again, a great resource for us is Bhakti Minod Thakur, who's giving us all these wonderful teachings and messages. There are primary and secondary names of, of God. And the primary names, <clears throat> they're in relation to Krishna and his interaction with his devotees, his qualities that demonstrate his loving exchange with his devotees of some form or another. And so these primary names, according to Haridas Thakur and Bhakti Vinod, they carry one to the stage of love of God. The secondary names, they can take one to the position of liberation. So liberation is fantastic and beyond fantastic, it's super fantastic, is love of God. And that's the teaching that we've been given. It's the gift that Lord Chaitanya wanted to give. Bhakti Vinod Thakur out of so many, many songs, this is one, it's a very simple song. Meditating upon the meaning of the names while singing the names helps us um, experience the, the love of God potency, the awakening of our loving attraction for Krishna in, in, in his position in the spiritual world, specifically in Goloka. Each of the names, listen to the names, meditate on the meaning of the names. This is a theme that will be presented for the rest of this short class this morning. If these second windows could also be open, that would be nice. There is, one is open, but the other is not. And over here as well, just move the, the plants and then replace them to keep the window open. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjavi Hadi Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjavi Hadi Madhava Kunjavi Hadi Gopi Jana Badabha Giri Vrdhadi Gopi Jana Badabha Giri Vrdhadi Gopi Jana Badabha Giri Vrdhadi Sodanandana Brajajana Randana Just Sodanandana Brajajana Randana Jamuna Tira Vanasa Jai 
जामुन थीरा जाया राधा माधव कुंज बिहारे कुंज जाया राधा माधव कुंज बिहारे कुंज गोपी जना बलाभा गिरी वर धारी गिरी वर धारी गोपी जना बलाभा गिरी वर धारी Jasod Nandana Bridge Janadan Jana Jasod Nandana Bridge Janadan Jana Jamuna Tira Bana Chadi Jamuna Tira Bhana Chadi Jaya Radha Madhava Kanja Bihari Madhava Kanja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hadi Jaya Vishnu Pad Parabha Hamsa Hari Vajaka Charaja Asta Tarasita Sings Ni Vajra Sita Vajra Sita Vajra Sita Vajra Sita Swami Sita Prabhupada Ki Jaya Amantra Koti Vaishna Vrinda Ki Jaya Shri Shri Kishore Kishore that was a Goramani Hari Bol, right? Hari Bol, Goramani, Hari Bol. Please accept mine. Nice to see you. Nice to have you with us, too. Well, the color, but not so good. Oh, well. So the meaning and the glories of the holy name. Um, One of our um, texts for performing devotional service properly, a primary text is Hari Bhakti Vilas. Hari Bhakti Vilas is a how-to manual, how to perform devotional service. And one of these days, the translation of the Govardhan School will be available of Hari Bhakti Vilas so we can have a proper translation. One of the how-to messages in Hari Bhakti Vilas is how to chant mantra. And one of the messages is when chanting mantra, one should meditating meditate upon the meaning of the mantra. Kind of obvious, but that's where attention should go to, you, to enter into the mantra, receive what the mantra is intended to give. We need proper guidance to know the meaning. 
because otherwise people have different meanings. Hmm. Just like Balabacharya came to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and said, I have some explanation of the meaning of the name Krishna, but Chaitanya dismissed him. There's, I don't need another meaning of Krishna, it's just Krishna, the son of Nanda Maharaj and Mother Jasoda, that's all. Not this means that, it's just it's Krishna and his loving dealings. That very statement finds its way again into uh, Jiva Goswami's writings. Quoting from scripture, but Krishna means the son of Nanda Maharaj and Mother Jasoda. That one. Because <laughs> there may be many people of the name Krishna, but it just refers to that one. So, meditating upon the meaning, that's where we're going to begin. Uh, in Shikshastakam, we hear Lord Chaitanya after giving the first verse, which is glories of the holy name, opulence of the holy name, greatness, the majesty of the holy name, comes the second verse, which is nam nam akari bahuda, which Prabhupada has translated as Krishna has unlimited names, bahuda, such as Krishna and Govinda, the, the Supreme Lord has many names, unlimited names. Nijasarva Shaktis, each of which is invested with innumerable potencies. So within each of the names of Krishna, there are unlimited names, there are special potencies invested in each one. So we're going to go through some of them, starting with some of the terms in Bhagavad Gita, Anyone that's read Bhagavad Gita knows from time to time Arjuna addresses Krishna in different terms. And each of those terms is invoking an aspect of Krishna. And that when that aspect of Krishna is invoked, that the heart of Arjuna is then open to that specific aspect. So similarly when we change upon the meaning of the names different different names are for different different potencies of the unlimited potencies of Krishna unlimited so that's how we're going to begin names of Krishna and their meanings okay, okay the contrast is all right Madhava just like the Jaya Radha Madhava. Madhava means the goddess of fortune. The, the Radha Madhava, the husband of the goddess of fortune. Now, the goddess of fortune, we're at least commonly accustomed to thinking of Lakshmi as the goddess of fortune. Someone was asking me the other day, when I grew up, I was worshiping Lakshmi, and sometimes, although I'm chanting my 16 rounds, my thoughts go to worship of Lakshmi. Is that okay? I said two things. We don't worship Lakshmi separate from Narayan. We don't do that. And when we chant the Hare Krishna mantra, Lakshmi is already there. Because Lakshmi and all the goddesses of fortune are expansions of Radha. Just as Narayana is an expansion of the, the original personality of Godhead, Swayam Bhagavan Krishna. So it's already included. Just chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> Everything's there. And then a little, I heard from Janani Vas. So that means it's authoritative when you hear something from Janani Vas. He, he, he had Pujari in Mayapur. Uh, there were some deities 
brass deities that were somehow acquired or donated way, way, way back when the, the property in Mayapur was first acquired. Some of you have been there, you know, there's a little grass hut where Prabhupada stayed and part of that little grass hut before there were any buildings is part of it was where the deities were worshipped. I forget what he said, they gave a name, but Prabhupada said, no, it must be Radha Madhava because the place of the Yogpith, the, the, the central place of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu must be called Madhava because he's the husband of the goddess of fortune and Radha is the goddess of fortune so it must be Radha Madhava something to that effect that's what Prabhupada said so Jai Radha Madhava when we sing Jai Radha Madhava it means that form of Krishna who is presiding in um, the, the center place of the personality of Godhead in this case Mayapur then another name of Krishna mentioned in Bhagavad Gita is Rishikesha so by calling the name Rishikesha we're inviting that aspect of the Lord where he's controller of the senses or he gives direction to the senses and that means not in Maya only in the service of Krishna that's an aspect of Krishna Rishikesha and Achyuta of nature and beyond karma beyond prakriti and he never even he may may appear here he's never influenced by it. that's an aspect of krishna known as achuta we'll see this name achuta one more time and in the painting at the upper left this is jana sharma the guru of gopakumar who's giving him his mantra Gopal Mantra but the mantra of the Supreme Lord who's in the spiritual sky in Goloka here's finally Gopakumar makes it in the mature stage of his chanting of his mantra which we should also aspire for to come to the mature stage of our chanting that, that's what we're here for um, so he who is the infallible Achuta. Again, we'll, we'll hear this name one more time. Similarly, this is Narada speaking to Dhruva and he also gave him mantra. Different mantra than the Gopal mantra, but mantra. And similarly, Dhruva went beyond his material desire and became filled with only one desire. He left behind by contact with Achuta, the infallible. The fallible Dhruva became infallible by chanting the mantra of the Supreme Lord. And pretty cool, huh? Keshava, another name mentioned in Bhagavad Gita, indicating a feature of Krishna's form, he has fine, long, black hair, Keshava. And another name of Krishna is Madhusudana, mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. So that name Madhusudana is invoked to indicate Krishna who kills the demon Madhu. Madhu was trying to steal the Vedas, Madhu and Kaitaba. And Madhu Sudana took the Vedas back and finished them. So he's 
a name for, for Krishna is this feature of him, the killer of the Madhu demon. Janardana is another name found in Bhagavad Gita. So one may address Krishna that way, Janardana. That's an aspect of Krishna who is the original bode and protector and maintainer of all living beings. And that's a lot of living beings. Janardana, both in the material and in the spiritual world. It's an aspect of Krishna. Again, invoking these names and meditating upon these names helps us connect with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Um, I'm going to say this a few times this morning, quickly. The whole of our weekend theme and meditation is taking shelter. The taking shelter of whom? If we have some idea of the whom we are, we are being encouraged to take shelter of, it invites taking shelter. So it's, it's a step-by-step -step process. Who take shelter of? And then the transformation of heart, which is that umbrella, if you remember from yesterday morning. The umbrella that wards off the miseries of material existence, but at the same time, very light shower of nectar on the inside of the umbrella, the, the bliss of our connection with Krishna. The two lotus feet of Krishna are like that. The lotus feet of the holy name, the tips of the toes of the lotus feet of the holy name are like that. You just have to touch the tip of the toe of the holy name get this benefit it's this is intended to assist us in the process of surrender to the holy name by appreciating the name the, an aspect of Krishna or Krishna himself another name of Krishna is Varshneya Varshneya means the Krishna who is a descendant of the Vrishni dynasty you look at the family tree, Vishni and Andaka and Bhoja, these are kings that come in the, um, the line in which Krishna chose to take his birth or make his appearance in this world. So they became honored by Krishna's appearing in their line. And so Varshneya indicates that relationship of Krishna with his dear devotee, Vishni, who appeared in his family lineage. Ari Sudhana, Krishna who kills the Aris. Sudhana, the killer of the Aris, the, the enemies of Krishna. And there were lots of them. And Krishna finished them in very attractive ways. And the demigods showered flowers when Krishna did it. Purushottama. Now this is a secondary name in the sense that it indicates his position. So he's the greatest of all persons. Purusha Uttama. This is Krishna rescuing the princesses who had, were under, under captivity. 16,000 princesses. Krishna killed the demon that had collected them all and, and married them all at, with their appeal. So he's the greatest of all persons. When we understand the name of Krishna in relation to pastimes like this, then it moves into this primary name because otherwise Purushottama is more of a generic name of the greatest person. Another name Yadava, just like this prayer, this song that Mahaprabhu would, would sing as he was traveling in South India, found in Chaitanya Charitamrita, and sometimes we sing during Kirtan. Yadavaya, Madhavaya, Keshavaya, Namaha. Yadavaya, unto Yadava, 
Krishna who appeared in this Yadu dynasty of Yadava line. Keshi Sudhana, the killer of the Keshi demon. Vasudev, son is Vasudev. That's Vasudev carrying Krishna to the other side of the river Jamuna in the middle of the night in a big storm with Ananta protecting. Another name mentioned in Bhagavad Gita is Yogeshwara, Krishna who is the master of all mysticism. Whatever power a yogi may manifest, Krishna is the source of that. And he's the source of all of the other things that they don't have. He's the, he's the reservoir of all mysticism, the master of all mysticism. He's the supreme personality of Godhead. But then the ultimate name after so many, many names and thousands of names, tens of thousands, millions, unlimited numbers of names, Nam Nam Akari Bahuda, unlimited numbers of names. But of all those names that the best of all names, Prabhupada would like to say this, is Krishna. Because within Krishna is everything. All these other names are within Krishna because Krishna is the, the repository or the, the basis, the support of everything. And all his expansions and all his qualities and all his characteristics and all his loving exchanges, which these names indicate, he is the reservoir of them all. And the meaning of Krishna, commonly Prabhupada would say, it means the all-attractive. To indicate the all-attractiveness of Krishna, so this is meditation, when we're chanting Krishna's name, all of this is not just information, it's inspiration and meditation. Hopefully these images and these names will help you get some support to, to take deeper shelter as we chant the rest of the morning. Prabhupada referred to the Vishnu Purana message of Parashramuni, where Parashramuni said that um, the, the name Bhagavan is singular. There's Bhagavan means one who possesses van, all bhagas or opulences in their fullness. And he lists the six opulences. And there's, of course, there's subsections or components of those six primary opulences, but all beauty, all knowledge, all strength, all knowledge, all renunciation, etc. So somewhere there's someone that's wealthy and someone more wealthy and someone more wealthy. But who is that person who can claim he is the proprietor of all riches, using Prabhupada's term, that's Bhagavan. And similarly, all knowledge, all renunciation, all strength, all beauty, all fame. Even the atheists, they know about God. They say God doesn't exist, but you know, he's famous. <laughs> Theists and atheists alike. So he, who is the source of all of those expansions of Bhagavan, that's Krishna. We, we saw this slide yesterday, taken from Baladev Vidyapusan's commentary on the thousand names of Krishna. And when he touches on the name of Krishna, the 20th out of the 1,000 names, he gives this message. The syllable Krish means existence and the syllable Na means bliss. The combination of these two is Krishna, the name of the Supreme Personality of God. This is a very special Upanishad, Gopal Tapani Upanishad one of the primary texts of the, the Shruti section of the Vedas. 
giving the meaning of the name Krishna. Very interesting in that commonly the Upanishads are thought of as presenting the impersonal Brahman. However, this Gopal Tapani Upanishad, if you read carefully in um, Brihat Bhagavatamrita, there are some portions of the Upanishads that are in this higher level of understanding Bhagavan. And they're not interested in the polemics of people arguing this and that. They just want to glorify the personality of Godhead, like devotees who are taking shelter, wish to simply glorify and take shelter of the personality of Godhead. So Gopal Tapani is one of those. Jiva Goswami wrote a commentary on that one. He makes this mention in his um, Tattva Sandarbha when the word Krishna is uttered in a mantra the very moment the first syllable is vibrated the sound this sound attracts the attention of Lord Krishna himself so when you're chanting and you're meditating on the meaning of Krishna so that you can give yourself to Krishna through that sound vibration please know that Krishna the all attractive becomes attracted it's a relationship it's not just something you're supposed to do it is something that we're encouraged to do take shelter of the all attractive bring the mind to one place even it wants to go many places any place but that one place continue to direct the mind to that one place and and when that sincere and serious effort is made to take shelter of Krishna like that no and meditate on the fact Krishna becomes attractive you're just calling his name here's a I want to make this short so I don't want to say too many things but it's just a common experience if there's so many sounds in the room but somebody over on this side of the room or next to you says your name isn't it natural that attention increases like Bhakti Mitch <laughs> Jai Jagannath Rock Tuck you can see he smiles <laughs> it's natural now where does that natural propensity come from it comes from the source of everything where everything comes from it's not a solo effort it's not a doership effort it's a relationship entering into a relationship we're, we're calling Krishna's name and Krishna becomes attracted even if we're dull sometimes you may feel I'm just really dull even if you're dull Krishna becomes attracted we mentioned this yesterday but it's nice when Narayana heard Ajamila call Narayana he thought oh he's calling my name I must come at once and rescue him immediately Yogakshema Vaham Yaham. Immediately. What to speak of in the course of the rest of the morning until we complete our 32 round scheduled time. Strive like anything to feelingly, like Bhaktivinoda Thakur was describing in his wonderful prayers yesterday. Kandiya Kandiya weeping and weeping please give me shelter please give me shelter he wants to give us shelter we don't have to plead for him he he's begging us you please come to me we're going I don't know when I have a problem I'll come to you anyway Krishna doesn't need 
us to do anything. But when we appeal in that feeling way, it, it, it's natural. Natural. Krishna's attention will come even more. Then, we, then the, 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 the relationship thickens. Like Prabhupada's example of making milk sweets. I don't know if any of you make milk sweets or sweet rice. And it starts liquidy. Just keep, you know, the heat keeps stirring. It gets thicker and thicker and thicker. Like that, boiling the milk process. So, keep going. Not, ah, Krishna paid attention. <laughs> Yay. What's next? So, just continue in that mood. Krishna permitting. I'll just a little sharing. I'll try, try to end quickly. Um, in central New Jersey, there's a new center, and um, we held a, a, a Japa retreat sometime, I forget even when it was, in the month of January, I think. And um, one of the persons who attended, it, it commonly happens at the end, some person or persons will come. So one gentleman came and you know we had we had finished our it was a 64 round day so it's just preparing for the the, the sunday class because it was full day sunday i'm sitting in a room he came in may i speak because you know i i've kind of completed my 64 rounds it's it was mona Vrata, but so in a side little side room so i just want to share this with you this is krishna's attention message um, I, I've been around the Hare Krishna movement for eight, nine years. I'm not a serious chanter. You know, three rounds, four rounds. And I've had lots of opportunity for association, but I never really took advantage of it. There were other retreats and things like that, Japa retreats. I never really went. But this was at the temple, so it was like, okay, i got to go. It wasn't like... No, rah, rah. It was, I got to go, I have to, you know, I have to avail myself to this. So I came thinking, it was kind of like blasé, let's see what happens. But the things that I heard really inspired me, he mentioned a couple of things. And so I thought, let me try. You know, Adav Shraddha. <laughs> let me try. And I started chanting. And, you know, somewhere through the first 16 rounds, something happened. It was just amazing. He, I, I, this is what he wanted to share. I felt like I was floating. Very, very light, either floating in the air or floating in the water, just effortlessly moving and light. And it was euphoric. I've never experienced anything like that. And it just continued and continued. And then I started thinking, wow, let me continue this. And it just went away. Then I was trying and trying and didn't come back. So then I threw my hands up in the air and said, let me just complete 64. I've never chanted more than eight rounds, max. So I just surrendered to the holy name. That I can't even remember the exact message that he heard that was the, the shelter of inspiration for him. So I just took, maybe it was that Krishna hears and Krishna accepts us when we call for Krishna to accept us. Like a child that goes like this. Everybody knows what that means. It doesn't matter what language or culture you live in. That means, please pick me up. Everybody knows. And so mother comes and picks the child up. And then in about 30 seconds, the child's looking to the father going like that. And the child goes to the father's arms for about 30 seconds. And then he's wiggling. He wants to go down again. Because that shelter, that, that position of safety, so he did like that. I just threw my hands up and said, do with me what you want. And it happened again. I was floating. And right to the very end, 
to this. This was amazing. So you know, my conclusion is, he said, Krishna is real. And the other conclusion is 16 rounds. Shame on me for not chanting 16 rounds. I will, I commit, I will chant 16 rounds. But it, it's just, it's just this thing. Krishna is real and we take shelter of him and Krishna, it may not be you float, but there's transformation of the heart of some kind. That's in the, the first verse of Shikshastakam, for sure. Chaitha Dharpa Namarjanam is going on, for sure. And then Krishna can transform us however Krishna deems appropriate to transform us. But we, to, to, to get to that transformation, the, 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 the spiritual potencies within Krishna's name, it helps to know who Krishna is and these names give some indication of who he really is. The reciprocation will come and the heart will change and we can move from where we are to where we want to be. That big gap from where we are and where we want to be. It's not going to happen on our effort, it's going to happen on reciprocation from Krishna. We make some effort, for sure. Then this other name, I'm going to end, Govinda. This is from the Brahma Samhita, Ishwara Parama Krishna. Sachit Ananda Vigraha Anadir Adir Govinda Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam Jiva Goswami explains the name Krishna is used initially because he's the Ishwara Parama. But the name Govinda is very special. Therefore Anadir Adir Govinda. The, the message of Brahma Samhita is Govinda, Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Bajami, because it indicates that Avatari, the source of Krishna that resides in Goloka Vrindavan, where with everyone, Govinda is giving pleasure to the senses, he's giving pleasure to the cows, and so many nice paintings of Krishna engaging with the cows. And the cows have love for Krishna too, as Krishna loves them. Krishna loves cows. And the cows love Krishna. Very, very special pastimes of Krishna with the cows. But this Govinda name means he who is the presiding person of Goloka. Govinda resides in Goloka. And this Goloka is the topmost realm. And in the very center of this Goloka planet, Radha and Krishna reside. This is an illustration of the um, Gayatri, or the, the Gayatri mantra that Gaudiya Vaishnavas receive that helps us. The same Gopal mantra that um, Gopakumar received that carried him to Goloka. So we have to chant the Hare Krishna mantra mindfully, consciously, carefully, with submission to the, the Supreme Person. Uh, I've gone way beyond the time I wanted to. I'll try to go quickly. Because there's some nice points. In, in, in the, this is Shukadeva Goswami. And I'm not going to read the text, just the essence of it is Shukadeva Goswami had experienced the bliss of Brahman. He had zero attraction for the bliss of sense gratification. He had full absorption in Brahman, but he became attracted when hearing Srimad Bhagavatam's message to the pastimes of Ajita. He became attracted by the pleasing, most melodious pastimes of Lord Sri Krishna, Ajita, or Krishna, the unconquerable Lord. He therefore spoke mercifully 
this supreme Purana, Srimad Bhagavatam. Anyway, this is from the 12th canto, describing the attraction of beyond the bliss of Brahman was the, the, the happiness of being in the shelter of Ajita and his wonderful pastimes and his wonderful form and his wonderful qualities. Just by hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam and all of that is compressed in the holy name. So now you saw this, there's just three slides, these are glories in the land. O oh, Harinam, the tips of the toes of your lotus feet are constantly being worshipped by the glowing radiance emanating from the string of gems known as the Upanishads, the crown jewels of all the Vedas. You are eternally adored by the liberated souls such as Narada and Shukadeva. O oh, Harinam, I take complete shelter of you. This is Rupa Goswami in the first of his eight prayers to the Holy Name. Here is Sanatan Goswami speaking something of appreciation of the Holy Name. All glories, all glories to the all blissful Holy Name of Sri Krishna, which causes the devotee to give up all conventional religious duties, meditation and worship. When? somehow or other uttered even once by a living entity the holy name awards him liberation the holy name of Krishna is the highest nectar it is my very life and my only treasure notice the illustration at the bottom the sound of Krishna is entering into the ear a verse spoken in the second canto, chapter one, by Shukadeva Goswami, pictured in the top. O King, constant chanting of the holy name of the Lord after the ways of the great authorities is the doubtless and fearless way of success for all, including those who are free from all material desires, those who are desirous of all material enjoyment, and those who are self-satisfied by dint of transcendental knowledge. I think we fit into at least one of those three categories. And further, this is Shukadeva Goswami speaking uh, this, it, it, in summary of the glories of the Holy Name, Sixth Canto. Etan, Etavan, Evalo Kesmin. Pungsang Dharma Parakshmata Bhakti Yoga Bhagavati Tan Nama Graha Nadibihi. Devotional service beginning with the chanting of the holy name of the Lord is the ultimate religious principle for the living entity in human society. So we have the opportunity, created especially before Kishore Kishori, and someone can bring Tulsi Devi back out again. And Haridas Thakur, we, these are all sources, of course, Srila Raupad, to help give us support and the devotees staying together, especially it's a nice day, not too hot, not too this, not too that. Um, stay inside if you can, as much as you can. Stay fixed in the Sangha of devotees if you need to go for a walk. There's nice places, there's a, a lake down there, very peaceful. But this is beyond peaceful, this is transcendental. But you may need to go for a walk, that's okay. And uh, s stay absorbed. In the, remember, recall the messages. If you need, take a look at your notes or something or other to refresh, pause and introspect and messages that you've heard and take shelter and feel Krishna accepting you as you're submitting to him through his holy name. And may your hearts transform. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.
to please maintain